Oh, have y'all came across this story? I unfortunately did. Not not surprising, but still, like, what? Like, you couldn't come up with your own fake story about going to a protest. Kamala Harris, you had to plagiarize MLK. Jesus Christ. Link it down below. Copycat Kamala. Kamala Harris' Wheatum story was plagiarized from Martin Luther King Jr. interview with Playboy in 1965. Kamala Harris has been accused of plagiarizing an interview from Martin Luther King Jr., which appeared in Playboy in 1965. In her interview with Elle magazine in October, the vice president-elect, 56, recounted a story her mom, her mom told of attending a civil rights march in Oakland, California when she was a child. This dude's rolling over his grave right now for being used for such ridiculous purposes as to prop up Kamala Harris's bona fides as some activist or, or protester having this type of story. I mean, it's ridiculous. She told the publication, my mother tells the story about how I'm fussing. And she's like, baby, what do you want? What do you need? And I just looked at her and said, freedom. Eagle-eyed social media users, though, have picked up uh, that the story appears to have strong resemblance to a tale previously told by MLK Jr. during an interview with Playboy in 1965. At the time, he said, I will never forget a moment in Birmingham when a white policeman accosted a little Negro girl, seven or eight years old, who was walking in demonstration with her mother. What do you want? The policeman asked her gruffly, and the little girl looked at him straight in the eye and answered, Huida. <laughs> she couldn't even pronounce it, but she knew it was beautiful. Many times I've been in uh, sorely trying situations. The memory of that little one has come to my mind and has boy buoyed me. <laughs> wow. Okay, not super surprising that seems like you know a lot of these political figures are willing to say or do anything even if it's lie and plagiarize and claim their story is authentic when it was actually stolen from mlk there you go kamala harris had also relayed her story in a 2004 interview with w magazine and also referenced it in her 2009 book smart on crime it's not the first time high-ranking Democrats have been accused of telling false, false stories, like Biden falsely claiming what he marched with Mandela or something, right? Um, Joe Biden ended his first campaign for president in 1988. After it emerged, he had lifted parts of speeches from the <laughs> then-UK Labor, Labor Party, Neil Kinnock, and he had failed a course in law school after plagiarizing five pages of a law review article. Oh, and he just keeps keeps failing upwards. All these hacks do. You. There you go. That's what I was talking about. Biden also faced similar issues in 2020, including a claim he made a number of times during the Democratic presidential primaries that he had been arrested while seeking to visit Nelson Mandela in South in a South African prison in the 70s. Jesus Christ, dude. It's, I guess it's a perfect fit, a couple of, of liars and, and hacks, you know? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I said, freedom. Freedom. Does Harris's evocation of the need for freedom grapple with any of the issues that were driving King's activism before his death? Does her career in public life suggest... She understands and cares deeply about systemic poverty and racial inequality. I would say definitely no. I mean, for God's sakes, when she was, was it, um, district attorney um, in San Francisco, she was advocating that the parents of truant children be locked up. And it was even the federal, federal government had to come in to California and say, no, your prisons are so overcrowded you need to release some people, some incarcerated people. And she's like really dragging her feet at that time, wanting to keep as many people locked up as they could. That's Kamala Harris. Her 
legacy and what she represents has nothing to do with the things that I'm okay fought and stood for. Com almost polar opposites, frankly. It's a cruel joke to present Harris with her record as an agent in the Carlsville State, exactly who bragged and smirked about throwing the mothers of truant children in jail to a room full of white police brass as an inheritor of the legacy of the man who said this on April 4th, 1967. Since I am a preacher by calling, I suppose it is not surprising that I have seven major reasons for bringing Vietnam into the field of my moral vision. There is... At the outset, a very obvious and almost facile connection between the war in Vietnam and the struggle I and others have been waging in America. A few years ago, there was a shining moment in that struggle. It seemed as if there was a real promise of hope for the poor, both black and white, through the poverty program. There were experiments, hopes, new beginnings. Then came the build-up in Vietnam. And I watched this program broken and eviscerated as if it were some idle political plaything on a society gone mad on war, and he knew that America would never invest the necessary funds or energies in rehabilitation of its poor so long as adventures like Vietnam continued to draw men and skills and money like some demonic destruction, destructive suction tube, so I was increasingly compelled to see the war as an enemy of the poor and to attack it as such. Completely right, I'm okay. Preach. Preach. Perhaps more tragic recognition of reality took place when it became clear to me that the war was doing far more than devastating the hopes of the poor at home. It was sending their sons and brothers and their husbands to fight and to die in extraordinarily high proportions relative to the rest of the population. We were taking the black young men who had been crippled by our society and sending them 8,000 miles away to guarantee liberties in Southeast Asia, which they had not found in the Southwest Georgia and East Harlem. So we've had, so we've been repeatedly faced with the cruel irony of watching Negro and white boys on TV screens as they kill and die together for a nation that has been unable to seat them together in the same schools. So we watch them in brutal solidarity, uh, burning the huts of a poor village, but we realize they could hardly live on the same block in Chicago. I could not be silent in the face of such cruel manipulation of the poor. Bam! You see. Kamala Harris or, or Joe Biden dropping knowledge bombs like that, but no, they're fine with lying and plagiarizing Biden saying he marched or went and visited Nelson Mandela and then Kamala Harris p plagiarizing from this uh, interview that MLK did back in 65. Also a good point that <coughs> at Della Morte makes on Twitter here. Not to mention in reference to Kamala, her unconditional and reflexive support for military adventurism and U.S. imperialism around the globe at an absurd and ever-ballooning cost while helping to tighten the austerity belt on people here at home. <sighs> Definitely, um, yeah, I don't think MLK would be okay with her plagiarizing that, especially because she doesn't stand and fight against the things that MLK fought against, like militarism, capitalism, you know, imperialism. <laughs> Again, he was a very vocal advocate against the war in Vietnam. Of course, this locale appropriation of the mythology and history of black activists who are labeled as insurrectionists and agitators and troublemakers by people whose entire life work Life's work has been to convince people the system is mostly doing the best it can for them is vile. I, I co-sign that. Again, yeah, not, not surprising. A lot of these folks in positions of power are willing to say and do anything that they think will, uh, you know, increase their chances of further elevating their their image, their status, their, their connections, whatever. And, um, and you know... With that being said, uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are a very good fit because they both seem to have no type of real center. It's just say or do anything that they think will increase increase their their power, their their prestige. So, not surprising, frankly, but still very very disgusting to see. Subscribe for more content. 
like the video if you like the damn video peace much love all power to the people